The next project for me to tackle was fixing that corner. I had seen that there was something ugly going on there even before I pulled the wood off. But after I pulled the wood off, uh, I could see how ugly it really was. These are 8x8 eight eight beams in this house. One of them was completely rotted away and missing at the bottom. Um, I had to take all the siding off the house and when I did at one point all the plaster fell down on my head and this is when this shot was taken but you know I kept pulling it apart and pulling it apart and trying to visualize how to rebuild this corner beam and I was thinking I was in pretty good shape here this wasn't all that scary you know even though this thing was rotted away what I did is to uh, basically chip away the rotted part with the idea of replacing it but what really scared me is when I pulled this old porch away the whole corner of the house fell apart you see these big stones they're supposed to be holding the house up well they just rolled right out into the yard and there was no sills under the house uh, my brother-in-law Kevin told me these old post and beam houses are so strong that you could knock a corner out from one of them and it wouldn't move well this proves that because if you look at this house, there's really nothing holding this corner up. The sills are completely gone. The roof line's still as straight as an arrow. These houses are extraordinarily strong, and it's a real testament to how they were built that this house, more than 175 years old, could still be standing when it looks like this. Uh, this scared me about half to death. In fact, I, I, I had to go see my neighbor, who's a, who's a builder and a real nice, helpful guy. He came down and sort of said, you know, this ain't no big deal, we can fix this, and he kind of explained the process of, of how to do it, and, and with his, you know, encouragement, I started tearing out the old sills and working to put everything back together. The first thing I had to do was get the, the stones back in place, these big granite stones, and, you know, with them in place, I didn't just want to stand them up and set the house back on them, so what I did was, um, I went up under the house and built con uh, uh, forms and poured about 2,000 pounds of concrete, all of which I mixed with a, one of these little automatic mixers in there, in that whole corner, filled it up with uh, uh, our rod. I made that whole corner uh, and then I was able to kind of jack the house up working from that concrete once it dried and chip away at all of the old sill and then rebuild the sill. My neighbor kind of taught me an easy way to do this so you didn't have to wrestle big beams up under the house and it actually worked out quite great. Uh, once the sill was rebuilt, it was a pretty easy job to start rebuilding that corner. Got me some good old rough hemlock to build that with. That wood will stay in there for another 150 years. And uh, here you have it. You can sort of gradually see the process of that corner coming back together. and. You know, I, I enjoyed the work. It was actually really great. And, uh, you know, the nice thing about it was that I, I sort of reached a point where it was all going back together. Nice, fresh insulation, nice, fresh wood. Really feeling good about this. Of course, as I looked across the front of the house, I could see I still had a boatload of work in front of me. But, you know, the worst was over. Having, having beaten this and uh, put it back together and have, having made the house stronger, I just felt a lot more confident about what I could do next, and that gave me a real great place to start. So, anyway, here it is, the old house. You kind of saw the before and after, and uh, this is me leaning back against my work, feeling pretty tired but happy that I had, uh, you know, made a big step towards saving the old house.